Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Assembly of God Online. My name is John Martin. I serve as the lead pastor of our church. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you to this online service. Today on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember. We remember those who have gone before us, and we also take time to enjoy time with family and with some friends that may be close to us. So let's worship the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for all of what he's done for us. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and to be glad in it. We're here to praise the name of the Lord this morning. We're here to give him glory. He is our hero. This has been an awesome series. He's our hero. Here we go.
speak of His goodness and how He set you free. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah in this place, hallelujah. God, we thank you that our sins are gone. And God, we thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, God, which means that even now as we watch, you are with us in our homes, in our living rooms, God, and anything is possible in your presence, God. So we pray, if anybody is in pain, God, I pray that you would bring healing. God, for those that are discouraged, God, may you bring hope and encouragement to them 
right now, Father God, knowing that you are with us, God, knowing that you are faithful to keep your promises, God. Protect our church families, those that are shut in as well, God. And I pray and declare that this Sunday would be a Sunday of victory, a Sunday of salvation, a Sunday of healing, Father God, for you are mighty to save, you are mighty to heal, Father God, and we thank you that you are faithful, God, we pray. And all of us say, amen, church. Amen. Let's keep worshiping this morning.
armor still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm gonna sing that I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship when called upon to defend and liberate. They said yes. They found courage to rise with every son, loyalty toward their country, discipline for every command, even in the darkest hours, they said yes. They cherished and fought for freedom, so those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written, they said yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. Father, we thank you for those that said the ultimate yes and gave their lives as a sacrifice for our freedoms, Lord. We praise you for those that had the courage and the bravery to step forward, Lord, men and women, God, that served our country. And Lord, we thank you for those spouses, Lord, and those children, Father, that are without their loved one. But God, we thank you for that ultimate yes, Lord. We praise you, Father. And Father, we thank you for our veterans, those who have served our country in various areas of the world throughout various times. Father, we pray for those who are still carrying the baggage of war. Father, those who struggle with PTSD, Lord, we pray that you minister to them, bring healing to them in a powerful way, Father. And lastly, Lord, we pray for those who are currently serving. Father, we thank you. Not only do we thank them for their service, but God, we pray a covering of protection over them. Yes. Wherever they yes, may, may be, whatever they are doing, God, we pray, Lord, that they may sense the presence of your Holy Spirit at all times. Protect them, guard them, keep them each and every day. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. This is Hal Donaldson of Convoy of Hope with an update on our response to the coronavirus. With your help, our fleet of tractor trailers filled with food and emergency supplies have crisscrossed the nation in the last five weeks to deliver help and hope to families hit hard by COVID-19. I'm pleased to report that we have now surpassed our goal of providing 10 million meals. I wanna say thank you to everyone who helped make that possible. But we know that this is in time for us to stop. At our distribution sites across the country, the, the line of waiting cars often is stretching more than two miles. And in community after community, we're hearing heart-wrenching stories and we're seeing desperate faces. So with your help, we're going to go well beyond 10 million meals. We're going to keep our trucks rolling, meeting as many needs as possible. 
So please know that anything you can give right now will help us deliver more truckloads of food and emergency supplies as we press on to the next 10 million meals. What an amazing convoy of hope, inspiring video, 10 million meals that have been distributed throughout the United States and the world, and we are now going towards another 10 million meals, and we can be a part of that today. I want to encourage you through Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, as we've been reading through our Proverbs uh, challenge I love what it says. It says, whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. You know, as a part of our church, we desire to continue to meet the essential needs of our community, not only spiritually speaking, but also through helping bring meals and bring supplies to families in need throughout our community and around the world. Today, as we prepare to give in our tithes and offerings, we also want to extend the opportunity for you to join in on this vision to feed another 10 million families around the U.S. and around the world. Today, as we prepare to give, there are three different ways that you can give. The first is through push pay. You can text to the VF Assembly to the number 77977. And on that link, you can uh, scroll down to give your tithes and offerings. But as you give above and beyond today towards Convoy of Hope, there is a link that will be uh, designated for Convoy of Hope. So once again, thank you for doing that. The other options are that you can give online and that same opportunity will be uh, available to you to give your tithes, offerings, and a special link for Convoy of Hope. And lastly, you can, of course, mail in your check uh, or bring it to a drive-in service. And once again, thank you for partnering with us as we continue to see the gospel spread and lives being changed, lives being blessed through Convoy of Hope and through our church. Thank you for your generosity. A hero is a person who faces danger and combats adversity through feats of ingenuity, courage, and strength. What makes a hero? Heroes aren't born. They are people who are ordinary people like you and me, and they accept a challenge, the challenge of facing fears that could be in front of them. They are people who learn to be bold. They're strong and tough in difficult situations. They exhibit courage when it is needed most. And through this series, we've looked at several different people that have helped us to identify the importance of what that hero nature is about. Today is part six of the series. We're winding it down today, but let's go back and review just real quickly. In week number one, we looked at Caleb. It was Joshua and Caleb that went in to the promised land. They spied out the land. They came back with a great report, a land flowing with milk and honey, a, man, a land that we should go after. And 10 of them said, no way, the people in the land are too big. But Joshua and Caleb came back and said, let's be courageous. Let's go after it. God's with us. He'll help us. Caleb exhibited courage. Jonathan, week two, who was a loyal friend a person who stood by David's side in the midst of some really awkward situations. And sometimes as we deal with life, we need good friends who stand by us and help us. They're loyal. They're, they're a great team member. They're people who believe in us. Week three, we looked at Abishai. Abishai, a man who we may not know so much about. He was a warrior. He was one who was a protector of King David. He was one who was loyal and loyal to the very end where he protected David even the very end of his life. 
Lydia, a businesswoman, a dealer in purple, the color purple, how Lydia was used of the Lord with her wealth and her influence and her hospitality to bring encouragement and strength into other people's lives. Last week, we looked at Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea, who was part of the Sanhedrin, risk, took the risk and went to Pilate, asked for Jesus' body. When Jesus died upon the cross, it was in Joseph's tomb that Jesus was laid. Jesus only needed it for a couple days before he resurrected from the dead. But Joseph of Arimathea took a big risk by talking to Pilate about that and swimming against the current of the culture of his other friends, a part of the Sanhedrin. Today, I want to talk to you about a wonderful couple by the name of Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila were a husband and wife team, a dynamic duo, legends in the early church. They worked with the Apostle Paul to plant churches in major cities like Corinth and Ephesus and Rome. Without their partnership, Paul would not have been able to establish the gospel in these cities. They were a true power couple in the kingdom of God. And today, as I think about them, I take us to the book of Acts chapter 18. There in verses 1 and 2 it says, Then Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he became acquainted with a Jewish man by the name of Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently arrived from Italy with his wife Priscilla. They had left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all Jews from Rome. Four things I want to share with you today that I think are really important for us to understand as we look at Priscilla and Aquila, look at how they were used of the Lord. They were heroes of the faith. Number one is that they were resilient. They were resilient. You know, there's times in all of our lives where we get knocked down. Maybe you feel like you hit the pavement, bam, just like that, and, and you skin your chin, you skin your nose, or whatever it may be. You just got to get back up and dust yourself off and keep going. Be resilient. Don't let your culture pull you down. Don't let circumstances pull you down. Don't let your own finances pull you down. Don't let your experiences in life pull you down. But re be resilient. Get up. Dust yourself off. Get back in the game. Acts chapter 18, in verses 18 through 20, it says, Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that, then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and went to nearby St. Gria. There he shaved his head along with the Jewish custom, marking the end of a vow. Then he set sail for Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. They stopped first at the port of Ephesus, where Paul left the others behind. And while he was there, he went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. They asked him to stay longer, but he declined. Paul was always on the move. And because of Paul's willingness to move and to continue to plant churches in various cities and to continue ministry to happen, Priscilla and Aquila, who were with him and helped him, moved as well. Sometimes we need to be resilient. We need to be willing to not let certain things pull us down in the move and in their ability to go from one place to the other. They could have become bitter. They could have been jaded. They could have been hopeless. Despite relocating and having their lives disrupted time and time and time again, multiple times, they were able to withstand the struggles of life. They were able to improvise. They were able to adapt. They were able to overcome the obstacles that were in their way. And as a part of this COVID-19 pandemic, I want to challenge us to make sure that we are people who can adapt. We are people who don't let the circumstance pull us down, but we become resilient. We become people who dust ourselves off and get back into the game again. God, God doesn't want you to stay on the bench. God wants you in the game. And so 
getting off the bench, getting in the batter's box, getting into the game, making sure that we do what God is calling us to do is so important. One of the things that the enemy wants to do, he wants to just bring you discouragement into your life. He wants to pull you back and say, I can't do it. I want to challenge you to not have that attitude. It was Nelson Mandela, the famous Nelson Mandela, who once said, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Don't let someone else get the better of you. Don't get, let the circumstance you're dealing with pull you down, but rather rise up above that circumstance. Another person once said it this way, when plunged into boiling water in a tough situation, if you're an egg, your affliction will make you hard. It'll make you hard boiled and unresponsive. But if you're a potato, you will emerge soft and pliable and resilient and adaptable. Do your tough situations harden your heart? Do they pull you down? Or does it make you rise back up, float to the top, and continue to be pliable and adaptable in life? One pastor once said it this way, where do you get the resilience to keep going? Faith, faith. Your faith in the Lord gives you that resilience. It's believing God could do something any moment that could change the direction of your life and you don't want to miss it. So you keep moving forward. It's believing that God will give you exactly what you need when you need it most as you learn to rely on him to accomplish his purpose in your life. Relying upon the Lord. Be resilient. Don't let the circumstances of what we're dealing with today pull you down, but rise above that and let God use you. Handle adversity well. A second thing that Priscilla and Aquila did very well is that they were resourceful people, resourceful people, resourceful people. I I think of the resources that they had at their fingertips. They came from being a tent maker. They came from a place that said, hey, we're gonna have a can-do attitude that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Acts 18, verses three and four, it says, Paul lived and worked with them for they were tent makers just as he was. Paul was a tent maker. Priscilla, Aquila, they were tent makers. They, They had the ability to earn a living other kinds of ways and and they let the Lord use that to resource them to do other things for his honor and glory. I think about how easy it is for us to come before the Lord and say, Lord, what can you give me today? How many times have you ever asked God for something? And there's nothing wrong with asking God for things. We do it all the time. But I want to challenge you to not only have a getting attitude, but have a giving attitude. If you're only coming to the Lord for what you get, then you're missing that relationship. The Lord wants you to move away from what I'll see would be an immature faith onto a mature faith. And don't get me wrong, there are times as mature Christians, we need to continue to ask the Lord for things, but we also say, Lord, what can I give back? What can I contribute to the cause? How can I be a part of what is going on? They use their entrepreneurial abilities their unique position in the marketplace as business owners to support themselves. They use their talents and their gifts and their God-given abilities to do special things that allowed them to be able to encounter some new fresh things in different ways because they gave it, in a sense, all back to God. May we be resourceful. May we be people who say, Lord, I'm not gonna hoard it to myself but I'm going to release it to you. Are you coming to God only for what you get? Or are there times where you also come to to the Lord for what you can give? God's not only looking for what you're asking of him. He's asking for you to give back to the cause. Luke chapter 16, verse 9, 
makes this statement to us. It says, here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. Be a giver. Be a giver. I, I love the example of a sponge. That, that God is wanting us to be sponges and, and, and a sponge and, and the value of a sponge is not just to soak in, but it's also to give back out. If a sponge only soaks in, it becomes a wet blob. It's just sitting there really kind of useless. But if a sponge soaks in to be able to give back out, it creates room to be able to soak in more, to be able to give more out, to soak in more, to give more out, to soak in more, to give more out, to soak in more, to give more out. That God wants us to be like that. God wants to pour into you so you can be a giver back out. May we be a conduit of those amazing resources that we are blessed to be a blessing. A third thing that I want to challenge us to realize out of Priscilla and Aquila's life is that they were gracious. Number one, they were resilient. Number two, they were resourceful. But three, they were gracious. I love this. We pick up the text there in Acts chapter 18. And it says, in verses 24 through 28, it says, Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well, had arrived in Ephesus from Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the way of the Lord, and he taught others about Jesus with enthusiastic spirit and with accuracy. However, he knew only about John's baptism. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained the way of God even more accurately. I love that. I love how God was using Apollos powerfully, and yet there was something missing. He was eloquent. He was one who was enthusiastic. He was accurate in what he was saying, but it says, however, he only knew of John's baptism. In other words, Priscilla and Aquila knew of the Holy Spirit baptism. He, they knew of the Holy Spirit empowering people in a, in a way that was beyond what Apollos was aware of. And, and I love how they handled it, where they didn't call him out. They recognized that Apollos was a gifted preacher and a follower of Jesus and he was missing the critical part of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life, and they lovingly took him aside. They explained the fullness of the gospel to him. They didn't rebuke him in public. They didn't embarrass him. They extended grace, and they taught with a gentle spirit. After that, Apollos' ministry flourished, we see Paul mention him as a co-laborer in ministry in other places in the New Testament. And it was Priscilla and Aquila who took him aside and spoke into his life. May we be gracious with how we handle others. There may be moments that you encounter someone who may not quite know what you know. Don't embarrass them. Don't speak down to them. Don't treat them wrongly or in a mean kind of way, mean-spirited kind of way, but rather be gracious in bringing encouragement into their lives. I love how they did that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. I love how Priscilla and Aquila were team members where they played a certain part in certain people's lives and it wasn't about them getting recognized and it wasn't about Apollos getting recognized. Different people will speak into your life. There may be someone who leads you to the Lord. 
There may be someone who disciples you, another person who's mentoring you in certain ways. There may be other people who come alongside of you at certain time and give you certain counsel that's extremely helpful in your life and you grow in your relationship with the Lord and because of that, we can say, thank you, Lord, for this person, that person, the next person, all these different people that God has placed in your life. We say, thank you. But ultimately, it's God that does the work. And so it's not about who the person is. And I love how Priscilla and Aquila were willing to, in a sense, kind of back away. They didn't need to be recognized. They were gracious. They were used of the Lord to speak life where life was so desperately needed. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Be gracious and attractive in the words that you choose, in the way that you speak, in the life that you lead. And the fourth and final thing I want to leave with you about Priscilla and Aquila, they were resilient, they were resourceful, they were gracious, but also they saw the bigger picture. Man, this is so important we get this. They saw the bigger picture. There are times that I have seen people in life that don't see the bigger picture well but they do. They did. In Romans 16, it says, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. This is the Apostle Paul penning the word to the church in Rome. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. What a great statement that Priscilla and Aquila were willing to put it all on the line for the cause of Christ. They came alongside of Paul and they helped him when he needed them most. It goes on to say, I am thankful to them and so are all the other Gentile churches. I also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Boy, we could gloss over that and miss it. So let's make sure we get it again in that last sentence. Also, I give my greetings to the church that meets in their home, a home church that Priscilla and Aquila led. We have seen already in some of the texts that we have read that they helped to establish churches in Corinth and in Ephesus, and now it's in Rome where they have a house church, Priscilla and Aquila. You know, there may be a gift that God gives you, No matter where you are, no matter geographically where you may be, the interesting thing is that God wants to use that gift in you no matter where you're located. If you have a gift to pray, you're going to want to keep praying no matter where you live. If you have the gift to teach, you have the gift to lead, you have the gift to prophesy, you have the gift to heal, you have the gift of faith, You have the gift of service or helps. Whatever the gifting is that's talked about there in the New Testament is God gives you those gifts. That's a gift that's inside of you and it doesn't matter where you live. You're going to want to put that gift to use and that's what they did. Priscilla and Aquila, they were church planters. They were people who were disciplers. They were people who spoke into people's lives. Now they're in Rome and Paul gives greetings to the church that meets in their home. The conclusion that I want to say to you very simply today is live like Priscilla and Aquila. Be resilient. Be resourceful. Be gracious. And see the bigger picture. Sometimes in the midst of difficult times like these that we're living in today, we lose sight of the bigger picture. God's wanting to do things not only in you and through you, but God's wanting to use you. He's wanting to use me. He wants to use us to touch other people's lives because everybody matters to God. Would you take a moment and just bow your heads with me as you're seated in your family room, maybe you're at your kitchen table, no matter where you are, would you bow your head with me and let me lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, today I thank you that you want to do fresh things in each one of our lives. Lord, that in the midst of this pandemic, 
there can be moments where it gets to us that we're just frustrated with kind of where things are. We want it to get back to normal. And Lord, I pray today that you would help us to see the bigger picture of what's at stake. Lord, give us opportunity to have great relationship building times with our spouse or with our kids. Give us an opportunity to see life differently, to see our work differently, to see school differently, to see even this upcoming summer differently. Lord, help us to be thankful for what we do have. Lord, help us to be resilient, that when we fall down to dust ourselves off and say, you know, I'm going to keep going, that we put our resources not on the bench, but we put them into play because you want us, Lord, in the game. And Lord, as we do life, I pray that you would help us to be gracious to those around us, that we all come at things at different points in time, different seasons, different reasons, different moments. Lord, empower us to be a blessing to someone else today. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us in that way. In Jesus' name. And friends, maybe you came to this particular service today online, and maybe you're at a point in time where you're not sure what kind of relationship you have with the Lord. The really cool thing is that God, God, the God of this universe wants a relationship with every single one of us, that he loves you. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave. The reason Jesus came is because he loves us and he loves you. And today, if you'd like to build a relationship with Jesus, the really cool thing is that God's there with you. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst of them. And so as you come alongside of this screen, whatever it looks like, whether it's your phone, your iPad, a computer, a television, whatever you're broadcasting this thing through, God's there with you. And he's tapping you on the shoulder. And he's reminding you that today can be your day. Your day to open up your heart and your life to him, the fact is very simple. Every one of us, every one of us has messed up at some point in time in our life. That mess up is called sin. And it's impossible for a sinful person to approach a holy God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to pay your penalty. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Jesus died upon a cross for you and for me so that we could pass on from death to life, eternal life. So today, if you want to open up your life to him, you want to invite Jesus into your heart, your life, I would love to pray a prayer of dedication, of commitment. And if you choose to pray this with me, you choose to invite Jesus into your life, he'll come in, he'll take away your sin, he'll give you eternal life. You don't need to try to convince him because he wants that for you. He's just waiting for you to ask. So today, make the ask. Ask the Lord to come into your life. Let's all pray it together. Let me lead us in this prayer. Pray with me if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die upon a cross to forgive us of our sins. Today, Lord Jesus, I put my hope and I put my trust in you. Please forgive me of my sins and give me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the very first time, or maybe it's a a rededication of your life to the Lord, whatever the case is, the angels in heaven rejoice. And so do we. There'll be a day that we'll have all sorts of people back in this sanctuary again. And as has been our custom, we clap for whoever makes that decision. So I applaud you for making the best decision of your life today. The Lord wants a relationship with you. Keep reaching out to him. As he has taken away your sin, you pass on from death to life. In a sense, eternal life begins for you today as you invite Christ into your life. Best decision you could ever make. Thank you so much for doing so. As we 
wind down this series today. And next Sunday on Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday we'll start a three-part series on the Holy Spirit called the Advocate, that he is one who is your advocate. He wants to help you in your life. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. series and we trust that you were truly blessed but as you just saw we begin a new series next week as a part of Pentecost Sunday entitled The Advocate this is a three week series that you don't want to miss I want to remind you that you can always watch all of our services through Facebook and YouTube and we premiere at 930 but you can always catch up on any that you've missed throughout the week and we offer an 8 a.m. Spanish drive-in service and a 10 a.m. English driving service. We want to also encourage you to stay tuned with us as we continue to update you in regards to ways that we will be allowed to meet. Stay tuned with us on social media platforms and through email and you can always feel free to call us at our church office at 760-243-4343. Thank you for tuning in with us today and worshiping. God is good all the time. God bless you and we will see you throughout the week.